Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, just like it says on the hat, and thanks for dropping in for yet another Ham Shack Chat. This time, we're not going to be looking at any equipment in the shack or any software associated with my shack. Instead, we're going to be looking to expand your knowledge of the band plan for the two meter band. Yeah, you want a band-aid? The two meter band runs from 144 to 148 megahertz. This is a total bandwidth of four megahertz, which might not seem like much, but it is in fact a larger bandwidth than all of the HF bands combined. A band plan is a voluntary gentleman's agreement on where certain modes and activities can be done in order to best meet the needs of the most number of users. In the US, the band plan was developed by the ARRL with significant input from the membership. Now it's time to start going through each of the 20 items contained within the two meter band plan. And as always, any questions, suggestions, corrections, or just general remarks can be left down in the comments. Ooh, oh, there's a comment. Mama's got a comment. Moon bounce is a challenging mode that uses the moon as a passive reflector. I've never done EME, which stands for Earth, Moon, Earth, so I can't really speak authoritatively, but I've linked to a good article that will help you get started with this mode. The frequency span is 144 to 144.05 MHz. From 144.05 to 144.10 MHz is where you can do weak signal CW. Single sideband moon bounce is even more challenging than CW moon bounce, but it can be done with time, patience, equipment, skill, and yes, money. You can also do weak signal SSB between 144.1 and 144.2 megahertz. 144.200 is the two meter SSB national calling frequency, and it's part of the subband from 144.2 to 144.275 megahertz, where you'll find general SSB operations. You can call CQ or a specific station on the national calling frequency. Then once a contact is established, you should move to another frequency in the subband. If you're enjoying this so far, or if you feel like you might be learning something, please take a moment to pop that thumbs up icon and give me a like. You like me. Now let's get back to reviewing the two meter band plan. The 144.275 to 144.300 megahertz portion of the band plan is reserved for propagation beacons. And the 144.30 to 144.50 megahertz segment is for the Oscar satellite subband. For more information on the Oscar satellites, I've put a link to a Wikipedia article in the video description for your review. Linear translators are used in several amateur satellites and allow for a wide bandwidth containing multiple modes, including CW and SSB at the same time. They could be potentially used in a terrestrial setting and have been in the distant past, but to the best of my knowledge, there are none currently active in a non-satellite role. For more information on linear translators, see the link in the video description. That said, the linear translator inputs are allowed from 144.5 to 144.6 megahertz. 144.6 to 144.9 megahertz is used for FM repeater inputs, which we're probably all very familiar with and is one of the primary uses for two meter FM, especially amongst new users. 144.9 to 145.1 megahertz is used for packet radio and FM simplex communications. At this point, we're halfway through our review of the amateur two meter band plan. We've covered quite a few of the more esoteric modes and perhaps taken more time than we needed to, though I have been trying to keep the pace in the presentation. The rest of this video should go by quickly, simply because most of the remaining subbands are already familiar to us. 
We've briefly discussed the linear translator inputs and between 145.1 and 145.2 megahertz, we find the associated outputs. Again, there is a link to an article about linear translators in the video description, which describes them much better than I can. 145.2 to 145.5 megahertz is where the FM repeater outputs are located. That said, you probably know what they do and how to make your HT or mobile rig or even your base rig work with them. Enough said. For miscellaneous and experimental modes on the two meter band, the subband from 145.5 to 145.8 megahertz has been set aside for those modes. We've already discussed the Oscar satellites and I'll refer you back to the AMSAT link in the video description for a little bit of self-study if you need it. From 146.01 to 146.37, you'll find repeater inputs. For the most part, these are FM repeaters, but about 40 years ago and before that, FM was not a widely used modulation mode. So you could expect your mobile rig to not only have tubes, but would transmit using AM or single sideband modes. Since the increase in use of FM, these modes have pretty much gone by the wayside, but they could still be used if you needed to. Please help me get the word out about this video and my other ham radio related videos by sharing. Sharing is good with your friends and compatriots in this wonderful hobby. I don't do a lot of social media beyond these videos, so if you could share the link to this video on any social media that you're a part of, I sure would appreciate it. The 146.4 to 146.58 megahertz subband is allocated to simplex operations. And within that subband is the national FM calling frequency at 146.52 megahertz. The FM calling frequency should be used to initiate a contact. And once that contact is made, you'll want to move to one of the other simplex frequencies. Simplex frequencies are very useful for organizing a small group of fams, whether it be a family at a theme park or doing some kind of community support event with your club. What you really don't want to do is tie up a repeater when you can use simplex. We've already discussed repeater inputs and the repeater outputs are located from 146.61 to 147.39 megahertz. Additional simplex frequencies can be found from 146.42 to 147.57 and finally 147.6 to 147.99 megahertz is allocated to additional repeater inputs. For those of you keeping track, and as I mentioned earlier on in this video, we have reviewed the two meter band plan and that band is divided into 20 different slices, each with its own purpose and use. There are some duplications spread across as you've seen. My source for this band plan was the ARRL website and the direct link to all the band plans is listed in the video description below. Thanks for taking time to watch this video and I hope that you now understand not only a little bit more about the two meter band, but some of the things you can do with the two meter band. Please let me know if you'd like me to expand any other bands. 73 until the next, hey y'all, this has been a Ham Shack Chat. I'm Tom, ND3N, and I am out. That was a good idea. <laughs>